do it. Hey, we're coming on 10.07 here on your hometown station, KHCS FM 98.1 and AM 1220. Hey, it's Menji. That's Jen. It's a Jen and Menji takeover. Hey, Jen. I like this. This is the first time for this. Well, we've done an interview, uh, like a, a quick recorded interview, but this is nice. This first is time. true. Yeah. So we're going to try this out. They've given us the keys to the castle. We're excited. We're ready. And we're looking for a fight. Ooh, ooh, fight. <laughs> That's right. Oh Jen is going to knock the ever loving snot oh, out of somebody I'm that tries to stop us. I'm running away. She's crazy. I'm, I swear. I love a lot that. of caffeine today. You gotta be. You gotta be a little crazy. <laughs> Jen, did you ever have have that moment that you realized that like, you wanted to get into radio or like, was it something that you always wanted to do? Or did you just go like, eh, this is cool. Um, I started in high school. I was on like the speech and debate team and they had like a, a radio division. So I would sit at my parents' kitchen table and, and take the, the newspaper and highlight the stories and kind of recreate the stories. And, and so that's when the, the bug really kind of bit. I was about 17, I guess, and oh. uh, fell in love with news. And, and here we are. Well, I just fell into radio. I, I didn't actually want to do it, but I have so much fun on this side. Back in high school, I did something similar. I wasn't in radio, but I had a film class and we would produce a morning TV show. Um, and, you know, morning TV shows uh, for high school, they're a lot more common now. But I swear, let me tell you, I was an innovator back in the day. <laughs> Like uh, some of the students were nervously standing in front of the camera and they would just read the announcements. But I brought in props. I was animated. I was a total character. I mean, I got made fun fun of for doing it, but I also didn't care. Like, I'm, fast. I'm, I'm not really surprised that that's your story. <laughs> really? You're not surprised? <laughs> no. OK, fast forward to today. Uh, we, uh, Jen, you have kids. Have you seen some of the morning shows that they're producing today? Um, are, you mean just like cartoons for kids, shows for kids? Or are you talking more like specifically the, the, the school? high school morning TV shows? Have you um, seen them? I have seen. So my son is in eighth grade and yeah, they, they put on these little shows, but a lot of the times it's just skits. Like they, they kind of have them running around doing silly skits, which the kids love. Of course they, yeah. they think that's great. Um, yeah, it's well, good. It's, it's a good kind of intro for them, even if it is just fun and, and skits. Let know. me tell you, I guess. Because I that's where I came from. That was my background. Uh, today, it is absolutely incredible. Like, it's a legit news broadcast. They have a stage. They got green screens. They got the camera, the gear. Like, I'm seriously jealous of what the kids have nowadays. It kind of makes me feel old. Well, the technology. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things out there that'll do that. Uh, the technology is so crazy now. Like, you know, we had just some old VCR or VHS tape, you know, and, and try not to drop it on the ground and, and shatter it. And now it's all digital. And See, I had that great. too. DV tape. Have you yeah. ever heard of that DV tape? Uh, it, it was awful. It was great, but it was awful. <laughs> so as jealous as I am, it is also important to celebrate the awesome work that these students are doing. And luckily we are. Have you heard of this? Have you seen this? It's called the Next Gen Media Maker Festival. It's happening next Saturday at the Canyon Country Community Center. It starts at 2 p.m. It's presented by our friends over at SCV TV. If you have a student, maybe even a grandkid, you're listening to this, maybe you are that student that we're talking about that's interested in working in the film industry, in the news, uh, media, broadcast, journalism. This event is where you need to be. Oh, by the way, it's free. Like it'll cost you nothing, like absolutely nothing. So you have no excuse not to go to this event. So in studio, we got Teresa Rich Richardson and Jessica Boyer from the Santa Clarita Valley Media Collective. Woot woot. Hey guys, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the takeover. Oh, very nice. Okay. And, so and you are old. When you were young, did they call it STN? Uh, the student yes. television network they did call it SCN. oh they did uh, you don't remember that so and she and i are like about the same age i think yeah and, yeah and i was also involved in the broadcast he program. just knows it was the menji show he doesn't it know was, that it was, well, <laughs> it was my it show had back an then. actual name not the menji show <laughs> right <laughs> so mine was like literally the ground floor like no one knew exactly what it was okay. so i didn't even have the title of STN. Caveman days. Yeah. Uh, so well, first off, on the wall. congratulations <laughs> to you both. It's the first year putting this whole thing together. Woo. I know that's a ton of work. And so I know 
there's a teen out there right now, because I was this teen that's going, ah, oh, shoot, I missed the deadline to submit my stuff. So what's the point of even going? Oh, that's a great question. So this event on May 18th, from two to four, we ha- so we have two parts to it, right? We have from two to four, the Munch with Mentors Mixer, where we've invited all of our judges, our sponsors, and just community partners to come and be available. of experts, yeah. people who are actually working in the fields that you might want to get yeah. into. They, they own production companies, they're uh, journalists, they're, um, they own marketing companies, graphic design companies. Um, I mean, we have Black Magic, who's going to be there. We have IATSE 695 and IATSE 44. Or I, we just have all these different groups of people who just want to give back to the next generation and provide that information, that insight, you know, whether you are in junior high or high school or even college or even post-college, or maybe you want to switch careers and you just want to learn more about it. This is, this is the time for this that. This is the place to do it. And production is such a collaborative effort. I mean, there's everything from paper clips to C47 clamps that you use in production behind and in front of the camera. This is a great opportunity if you think, oh, I'd like to be in film or television or in media making because it's always, the technology is always changing. We in our minds know film and television, but there's so many other areas and it's sort of like a job fair where you get to come and there are no stupid questions. Go up to someone and say, well, what is this and what do you do and how did you get into it? This is the place to do that where people are like well I don't know who to email or I don't know who to call come to this event it's free it is it only going to cost a little time and energy but come to this and find out what you maybe want to know or didn't know you needed to know to get into the and get into this business so that's the munch with mentors mixer from two to four and then four to five is the award ceremony for the for the students that did enter um we started with junior high and high school level this year we're expanding to college level next year and we're hoping to expand to elementary level next year because a, a lot of our mm-hmm. elementary schools now have their own production program so uh we're, we want to expand it and make it more inclusive and available and accessible to people in the community that's really, really cool. You're already dropping terms like C47 well, out here. That's what I was going to say. Come see? see what that means. What, is that, <laughs> what does that even mean? So you're going to have to go down. You're going to have uh, to go. I think that's super think, important. Yeah. Is like part of that munch. Uh, munch with mentors munch mixer. With I like m- difficult titles. So <laughs> yeah, you have to say it slow and preferably without a mouthful of food because you can hurt yourself. We're going to have to add Menji to that at some point there. But it's an up close. Oh yeah, munch with mentors. Yeah, you have to have Menji. a table. And Menji. Munch with <laughs> yeah, mentors mixer. But it's an opportunity to sit with someone and ask some questions or listen to some answers. Again, it's a, it's a great opportunity that you might might not get um, many, many chances to do that. So we're very pleased and proud to bring this to the community. Is this something that can turn into, so I can use it however I need to. I, I just want information. Maybe I'm looking yes. for a career change, like you mentioned. Is this even something curiosity. that I can use as like an internship, a, a potential internship? It's possible. Here's the thing about networking. A lot of people, and we just mentioned this the other day uh, in an interview, that the industry, you've you've heard the phrase, it's not always what you know, it's who you know. Oh, trust me, it's a whole lot of what you know, but it helps with who you know. And going to certain network mixers can be really, I mean, it's like a, it's like a job interview or an audition every time you do it. You have to go up to a stranger, you have to hand them a card or show them your QR code or say, hey, can I put my info in your phone? Hey, can I have your email? It's incredibly awkward, but it is a, a pivotal part of getting that job. So this is a chance to, yes, network. We don't know. We don't know who's going to be there who might say, you know what? Thank you for taking the initiative. Thank you for telling me your name and what you're interested in. Let me give you my email and we maybe we can connect. You never know. And there's a chance here that that could happen. It's like my husband likes to say, all they can do is say no. They can't eat you. So just go up, be fearless. That's going to take, that's a lot of this industry. And that's what networking is. This is a chance to learn a little networking. Really get out of your comfort zone. A hundred percent. Out of your comfort Uh, zone. In everything you want to do in life, get out of your comfort zone. Uh, So you mentioned networking. I think that's super, super important. Really in any media industry, whether it's film, news, radio, your resume might look nice. You might have the skills 
but more often than not, it really comes down to who you know. Um, I actually have a, a friend that used to work over at the New York Film Academy. You know her, Melissa. Uh, shout out to Melissa there. Uh, Ooh, she, she would say that when a position would open up, there would be a flood of like resumes and applications from Indeed, from LinkedIn, and just a handful of resumes from like personal connections from people that she knew. And man, is it easier just to go through that small pile first before even trying to tackle the chaos that's like indeed. So it really is important. Well, because when you know someone, you know their character. You typically know sort of their moral compass. You know their temperature, how they uh, work under pressure. And in production, where your days can... Oh, if you're thinking it's an eight-hour day, nine to five, you can take that away out of the equation. This is not for you. It's not for you. <laughs> it's a 12, 10 to 12 to 14 to 16-hour day. And when you know someone who's got that passion, has that drive, has that temperament has that that is what networking is all about learning who you can work with that's a huge part of it and I, I mean I tell people my day job is executive director of SCV TV and I tell my interns and the volunteers that come in I'm gonna hire from you first because I know how you work I like I've had experience with you I'm gonna pull just like your friend Melissa like I'm gonna pull from uh -huh. yeah the people that we know and and the whole concept of the Next Gen Media Makers Festival is the first program out of this branch of SCV TV that we're calling the SCV Media Collaborative. And the whole idea is to create a supportive hub, not only for the organizations and businesses in this community, but also for the, um, the people who live and work in this community, because so many people who live and work here are in the media industry in, in one way or another. And I just want to create all the people that have come together for the collaborative and for the festival just want to create that opportunity and this is the first year there's a lot of learning that has gone into this even on our end so we we want the public to come uh for another reason please come and tell us what you think we could also add for the next years we want to hear from you Feedback is come great. up find us shake our hands network there and and then say hey i'd love to give you an idea we want to hear it so come to this inaugural event even for that it if you're just tuning in, we're talking to Jen, or it's Jen and Menji uh, takeover. I'm talking to Teresa Richardson and Jessica Boyer about the Next Gen Media Maker Festival. It's happening next Saturday at 2 p.m. at the Canyon Country Community Center. And although this year it's all high school and middle school, the college students can, can still come to this event, right? Oh, yes, please, yes. please do. Because yeah. this is, a we're, again, we're going to have experts in the media industry who own their own production companies that are in journalism. I mean, Menji, you're going to be there. <laughs> and you this can is submit, true. You can submit for next year. Yeah. Know, know what's happening. Know what you're, what it's about. And, you know, maybe, maybe tell us, oh, yes, I, I'm working on something. I'll submit next year. Yeah. Yay, we want to know it. All right. If you guys are down, if you're game, I I oh, prepared game. a little bit of trivia here for you. Um, <laughs> I like how you work game into the sentence. All right. We're ready uh -oh. for you. All right. So I'm calling this one film school trivia. <laughs> Go ahead. Make my day. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Ah, you're killing me, small. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. Film School, School Trivia. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Oh, uh, it's ready as we're going to be. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Question number one. And don't worry, this is multiple choice. I know you guys were kind of freaking out. <laughs> I did. I went to film school. I went to journalism school and fine art school. Yeah, I you'll still know a school. lot. Come on, hit us. Go. Okay, question number one. Yeah. What is an establishing shot? Is it A, the first shot of the movie? B, the first shot of the protagonist? C, the shot at the climax of the movie? Or D, a shot that sets the scene or emphasizes the setting? D. 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 D is correct. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I have the answers here in front of me. And oh, it's like, wait a minute. So unfair. Yeah, but you know what? If we don't get it, thank you for being our, I'm being our backup. I'm Do teasing. It. All right. Question number two. What kind of lens has a fixed focal length? Is it A, a point lens, B, a prime lens, C, 
a still lens or D, a fixed lens? They're shaking their heads. <laughs> you said B? Yeah. B? B? Are you sure? <laughs> that is no, correct. There was it something is in the a room. prime it's a plug. It's lens. It's <laughs> Pretty good. Question number three. Which director directed a film that famously has the image of a rocket crashing into the moon's eye? Oh, now we're going back to the very beginning of <laughs> film. The guy who was responsible for every SFX in the planet. But go ahead, name them off. All right, here we go. Is it A, <laughs> Martin Scorsese? He's pretty old. <laughs> B, the Lumineer brothers. <laughs> C, George Milanais, <laughs> or D, Ava DuVernay? C, but I love me some Ava DuVernay. Um, my, my, my future is that haircut. Bonus points. Can you guys actually name the film? Oh. Uh, I have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, boy. okay. If you saw the image, you're, you'll be like, okay, I know. Is I it, got this. Is it? Not rocket to the moon, trip to the moon. There you go. Ding, ding, ding. Yay, oh, wow. trip to nice. the moon, 1902. You and might that, have and been. And that is a film school thing. You <laughs> might have been a little bit familiar. They made a whole thing. They did Hugo. about him. Hugo, yeah. 2011, that Martin Scorsese film. Yes. <laughs> hey, we can all learn more about our industries. But, but <laughs> that that is a really good uh, film uh, to uh, Hugo because it does give you an inside baseball kind of look to the beginning of filmmaking. All right, I'm going to look to you, Jessica, because I, I hope you get this one right. Question I'm number four. My fingers for those of you that can't <laughs> see me. Which of these lights is not used, not used in three-point lighting? Oh. Is it A, fill light, B, key light, C, point light, or D, backlight? C. There you go. See? That's at photography school ding, 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 coming ding, ding. in. There you go. <laughs> All right. Question number five. What is an example of Deus Ex Machina? Oh. Ooh, man. here we go. Now we're going into story. Is yeah. it A, when Jack yells, I'm on top of the world in Titanic? B, when the claw comes down and saves Woody and friends in Toy Story 3? C, when Bender raises his fist at the end of the Breakfast Club? Or D, the shower scene in Psycho. Wow, this is very, very avant-garde, obscure. So I think <laughs> you're the youngest from film school graduates, so you have to answer yeah, This it. is way oh, back in my archives. Like, so, I, do you guys yeah. know what DSX Machina means? Can you remind us? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So DSS, she knows if you Mr. remind Fun her. Fact over here. It <laughs> means it. <laughs> uh, basically uh, the god in the machine. So it's a story trope where you don't, you can't. It's there. The characters are in an impossible situation, and only God can come in and pretty much save it. Gotcha. It's a little bit of a cliche, but it's B when the claw comes down to save, save Woody, Woody and, and friends no. in Toy Story Three. All right, we that got a good one. Two more, two more trivia questions okay. here. Here's more film school coming at you. <laughs> Question number six. In the 1948 film, The Bicycle Thief, uh, this is an example of what kind of genre? I know this answer. Go ahead. Is it A, comedy, B, <laughs> a spaghetti western, <laughs> C, Italian neorealism, bing, 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 bing. or D, <laughs> French New Wave? C. <laughs> This Jen, why, what do you think? This is why uh, yes, see. <laughs> it was one of the first times the cameras were getting lighter and lighter because of World War II. And so they were actually taking these smaller cameras out into the streets and filming on location, not inside of a soundstage, not at some uh, a, a far out, far flung location. They were in the city. And that actually is a film that shows burnt out buildings and the reality so it was it was it was very innovative and Im impacted a lot of films that came after there you go fun facts for you jessica there <laughs> so learning italian so italian neorealism are stories about New the realities. poor uh working class it really makes a statement on the economic conditions oh, of a post-world war ii italy and it will make you cry even now so there's All one. right. Hopefully I'm going to end on a really easy one for you guys. Hopefully. Question number seven. How many acts are in a traditional film? How many acts are in a traditional film? Is it A, two, B, three, 
C, five. I'm throwing out numbers and letters here. <laughs> D, eight. Which one was five? Five? C. What that would be C. Oh, I don't even know what my children weighed when they were born. I can't do numbers very well, but it's five. Unfortunately, no, that is, is incorrect. It? Is, it is it three? It is three. Oh. So I think you're thinking of Shakespeare. Maybe. Shakespeare like, oh, used yeah, to be maybe. five. Yeah. Three or five. Theater, you yeah. know, all the media, it's all the same. <laughs> so we've been having some fun with some film school trivia. If you're just tuning in, it's a Jen and Menji takeover. We're talking to Teresa Richardson and Jessica Boyer about the next gen media maker festival presented by SCV TV. It's happening next Saturday at 2 p.m. at the Canyon Country Community Woo-hoo. Center, featuring appearances from Canon, Black Magic, several chapters of IATSE, Slam Dance, and so, so much more. You can go to what's what's the website, Jessica? Nextgenmediafest.org. And they, we do want to say thank you. KHTS has yes. been a huge supporter of this. Thank and you, thank and you. we could not do it without KHTS and, it's a and community all of our event, partners. A, We're, yeah. Very grateful. So that's nextgenmediafest.org. So that's where you can go to register for the event. I hope to see you there. Oh, I'm going to be there. Next Gen, not like Gen, our not operator. You're probably no, yeah, J. There, there you go. Yeah. Next G-E-N mm-hmm. Media like Generation. Right. Org. All right. So you've been listening to KHTS AM 1220 FM 98.1. Stay tuned. Me and Jen are going to keep taking over the airwaves for a little bit.